Amid scenes like these across the country, tonight the Coronavirus Task Force is now asking all Americans to voluntarily wear non-medical face coverings while out in public, the bold step announced by the president a short time ago. The new layer of protection is no substitute for social distancing, but it comes after the CDC added talking to its list of how the coronavirus spreads person to person. Tonight, there is growing concern over exploding hot spots. Hello, the American people. Uh, it's me, Donald. China has released a noxious gas inside of these onions. What do we know about onions? When we cut into them, we cry. And when we cry, our eyes become smaller, and therefore we know it's from China. The CDC has given out recommendations to wear these masks. I'm not going to wear them, simply. I feel great. I feel terrific. Uh... Uh, Chef and I are terrific people. And that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. We must come together, uh, not naked or anything, with pants on. We must come together, the American people, to defeat China. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, now we'll go back into our regular scheduled programming. Uh, here's Chef. Listen. I'm not a doctor, okay? I can't give you formal, legal, doc doctoral advice on how to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus, okay? I have given you some guidelines, you know, the big four, like I like to call them, on how to just be a robust human, and you can find that here. But what I can give you advice on, however, is how to stop the spreading of these noxious gases that are emitted by our everyday onion, you know? It's, it's bad enough our immune systems are under attack, but now our lacrimal glands are too. <laughs> Those are the uh, glands in your eyes that produce tears. Surprising you know that. So why do we cry anyway? You know, basically it comes down to this. Plants don't want to get eaten, just like us, just like animals, but unlike animals, they don't have claws, teeth, fangs, the ability to run to avoid predation. So over the course of their evolution, they have developed these plant pesticides, these toxins, phytotoxins if you want to be specific, and this is exactly how they stay alive and spread their seed. Now this whole idea is just a massive can of worms that we don't have time for today, but just know that they can cause a lot of problems for animals and humans alike, you know, way worse than crying from an onion. Unless you like crying out of your butthole. And like I said, that's not the worst of it, okay? But you don't need to know that today. All you need to know is that onions release these gases so that we don't eat them. Oh, what compounds? Oh, there's a who gives a crap uh, oxide and uh, you're never gonna remember this acid. It doesn't matter. This entire episode is about how to avoid this from happening. So let's get into it. First off, the absolute hogwash. Now over the years I've heard and seen many a Neanderthal try to do the most idiotic things in order to stop this from happening, you know, from removing the root of the onion, which, you know, you could see here, allegedly that's where most of the compounds are, so if you get rid of that first, it, it, it minimizes the damage. But listen, you're still cutting into the fibers. It doesn't hold any weight. Take a hike. 
another dumb one, throwing them into the microwave. Hey dude, let's irradiate our number one life source and then consume it. Or you've got some absolute geniuses out there running water over their onions inside of the sink on the cutting board at the exact same time that they're running a razor sharp knife through it. Leave, get, get out. The list is exhausting, okay? I mean, you got some people doing things that kinda work, but you got people out here wearing goggles to cut onions. I mean, I know this is a very controversial thing to say, but man up, you know? Even if you're a chick, grow a pair of balls, sprout some hairs down there, and man up when you cut some onions. In all fairness though, I heard the goggles pretty much work. But even if they do, you know, like what do you have to wear uh, your own glasses to see? You, you can't be throwing goggles over them like your Horace Grant at the free throw line. All right, there's plenty of cheaper, already existing, and definitely more attractive ways to get around this problem. So let's get into these right now. If you have the luxury of time on your hand, there are two tactics that work extremely well. The first thing you can do is put your onions in the refrigerator. Now some people go a step further, put them in the freezer, and I think that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard because you're just gonna break down the structure and increase how much water is coming out of those onions. We want our onions to be as fresh as possible. If you wanna put them in the fridge and get rid of some of that gas, it's totally fine. But you know, some people would argue also that it takes away some of that fresh onion flavor. My, some of my chefs refuse to allow us to even do such a thing. I personally never know a difference in the flavor but I definitely notice a difference in the crying. The whole idea here is that the refrigeration process actually makes these gases you know literally chill. They act as a retardant so it slows down the release of the gases you don't get hit all at once and it just makes the overall experience a lot easier to handle. The second tactic if you have time is to simply just half or quarter your onions and then let them hang out. Leave the room. Let it air out. Depending on how you're gonna chop your onions, you might not have the luxury of doing this because it would alter your cuts, but this tactic does work extremely well, allowing these fumes to just fill the air and giving you enough time to get out of dodge in the meantime. All right, so we're halfway there. If you don't have time to do those previously aforementioned techniques, there are still two, two of the best tried and true tactics when it comes to mitigating this whole crying game. Here they are. The first is maintaining a razor sharp knife. Now this should always be the case. I shouldn't even have to say this. Your knife should always be sharp. You know, you're reducing the risk of you actually hurting yourself. You're increasing your accuracy, your efficiency of the cuts, you know, cutting down on your prep time. You should always have a sharp knife anyway. But in reference to the onion gases, by maintaining a sharp knife, you're actually making more precise cuts. You're slicing and damaging fewer of these onion fibers. This tactic has always worked for me. If you don't know how to maintain a sharp knife, I already have a video on how to do that, so be sure to check that as well. Let's move on to the last example. And last but literally not least, the most effective way to avoid crying when you're cutting your onions is to have a sufficient amount of ventilation. Hands down, this is the best tactic. Back when I was still working in restaurants, if I had a significant amount of onions to cut, I would literally take up all of my prep. I would move my cutting board, all of my onions over to the line where we would actually pump out food for the restaurant because that's where the most ventilation was thousands and thousands of dollars for the best ventilation hoods in the world, why wouldn't you use them? Now at home, most of your kitchens will have some decent ventilation, maybe a fan built into your microwave, maybe a small hood or maybe a large hood, depending on your kitchen. Now I know the beginning of this video was for, you know, a bunch of ha-has. Okay, we're having a good time here, but I'm actually kind of serious about that whole fan thing. If you don't have a fan on your actual microwave, your oven hood, if you don't have a nice big industrial hood, if all of those things don't work, you gotta either open up a window, bring in a box fan, or do both. I mean, why not? It's worth a shot. Nobody likes to actually cry when they're cooking, so why not do as many of the things, stack them up, and you're gonna have the best results anyway. So that's it. Everything else that you see out there, it's ridiculous. All right, putting bread in your mouth like a homeless person, chewing gum, well, how is chewing gum gonna help you? All right, don't be a nightmare. These are the four tactics that are really, truly going to help you. And until next time, I don't like saying goodbye, so I guess I'll just say thank you. Love and peace. Manyokis. Chef out. Damn it. I knew that wasn't going to work.